I've always wanted to ride with you, Logue. What you thinking about? Deadpool and Wolverine. Can you imagine the fun? The chaos? You mind putting your mask back on? Super hard to eat while I'm wearing it. It's super hard to eat when you're not. <laughs> I'm about to lose everything that I've ever cared about. Go for me. Shh. Shh. Almost done. Our entire world needs you. Huh. All Rudd finally aged. Shut up. Oh, my God. Us? A team? The answer is yes. Shake on it. God! You nicked it. Just got the tip with your little steak knife. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie, Ryan Reynolds, and Marvel dropped a brand new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer for Best Friends Day. Obviously, Deadpool and Wolverine, he thinks of them as best friends. Wolverine doesn't think of him so much as a best friend, as much as he hates him, though. But there's a bunch of stuff going on during this, like there's a bunch of Thanos Easter eggs. The Juggernaut is back. I wonder how many of Vinnie Jones' catchphrases from X-Men The Last Stand we're going to get during this. Don't you know who I am? I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! There's so many more Easter eggs going on during this. Like, it's a whole bunch of new footage, so of course we'll break it all down. We're also in the middle of that Deadpool and Wolverine ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post your favorite one in the comments. Starting at the beginning of the trailer, they start with that red and yellow song for Deadpool and Wolverine, Ketchup and Mustard. Then there's a scene of them driving that minivan through the wasteland of what looks like the void past all the wreckages of the different Thanos Q ships from what looks like Avengers Infinity War and maybe Avengers Endgame. It could be from either one of the movies because they were attached to his big ship, which came through in Avengers Endgame. Big question here, though, is why did they get pruned? Like, what happened to cause a Nexus event with Thanos in his invasion during Avengers Infinity War that caused a Nexus event? A lot of you will also remember that Deadpool knows that Josh Brolin, who played Cable in Deadpool 2, also played Thanos. Like, he's made Thanos references before in that movie. It was too far gone. Zip it, Thanos. We have a deal and you forgot. Ah! Thank God Mr. Blake Lively is not. I, oh God, I don't feel well. Oh, what the <laughs> Thanos, you don't have the budget for this, Colbert. He broke the fourth wall this hard during the first movie, so part of the idea is that Deadpool, in the movies at least, he also knows in the comics too, but in the movies, he knows he's a fictional character inside a movie, and he knows that the Marvel movies, the MCU, are also movies that are fictional. This is going to really twist people's brains in a knot when he breaks the fourth wall during the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. He also makes fun of Fox during a lot of the footage they released at CinemaCon 2 that's not online yet. So he breaks the fourth wall to make fun of Kevin Feige, Disney, the MCU just in general, all the Fox Marvel movies. So just expect him to do that throughout the entire movie constantly. I'm not expecting to see actual Thanos, though, just Thanos references. And I don't know that Cable is in the movie because Josh Brolin made it sound like he was not in the movie, but he could just be lying. We get that new voiceover dialogue from Deadpool talking about teaming up with Wolverine because this is Best Friends Day when they're releasing this trailer. So talking about being best friends, making a team with him. Wolverine sounds like he's not totally on board with teaming up with him yet. We get that same suit-up montage of him at the TVA getting his new adamantium swords, Betty and White. It's the same basic swords from the previous Deadpool movies. They're named Betty and White for Golden Girls Easter eggs. But these ones are just upgraded with adamantium blades. His shiny new suit and his new guns. Even though in the other part of the trailer we see him with the golden guns that came from the other Deadpool variant with the even more hardcore armor. That scene probably just happens much later in the movie after they run into the Deadpool core and that version of Deadpool gives him his guns. Even though this scene of them fighting in front of the 20th Century Fox logo is from the previous trailers, if you zoom and enhance in the background, it looks like they've upgraded the CG, like the special effects in the background, visual effects, have added some items lying around in the void. There's the same tall ship in the background to the left, but in the background to the right, that looks just like a shield helicarrier. There's a couple other items over on the far left of the frame here. Can't quite tell what they are because the scene is so blurry. There's a couple new scenes of Deadpool trying to sell Wolverine on their team up. Like, can you imagine the fun as you see him flying through the air in the TVA trying to steal a tem pad from someone who's thrown it from one of the other TVA agents? It's happening in this room here with all the monitors where they were showing Deadpool all the scenes from the different Marvel movies. Like, they're scenes from different timelines, basically. They're basically showing him the MCU as he makes all the MCU references in the previous trailers. 
There's that funny scene of the new TVA agent down at the bottom below this walkway looking up at him, just completely impressed. Zoom and enhance on his mug there, it says, I like me. That phrase is actually a super deep cut for John Candy during Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Ryan Reynolds makes John Candy references all the time. He's one of his favorite comedians of all time. I like, I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. Because I'm the real article. It looks like Deadpool steals the Tempad. That might be why he's fighting these TVA agents here. This might be one of the places he goes after this. You actually see him holding it here with Wolverine in his yellow costume. So he gets it after he picks up Wolverine and they come to the TVA. This is a nice shinier version of the previous scene that we got inside the diner with them joking about Deadpool's face. Like, could you put your mask back on? Notice the little flask that Wolverine has, like he's drinking while they're doing this. You actually see him swigging whatever drink is over here in this other completely different scene too. Kind of seems like he runs the first half of this movie being just a little bit drunk. The only crazy thing about that though is it has to be super strong alcohol or he'd have to drink a lot of it because of his healing factor. Like it's very hard for him to actually get drunk. Then we get a bunch more scenes. All these guns here seem like they're from different X-Men movies, the previous Deadpool movie, Thor Ragnarok as well. Most of these people's faces are completely covered except for this guy right here. And he looks kind of lizard-like, but here's the thing, it doesn't look like the lizard from any of the Spider-Man movies. He doesn't look like Toad. It might be a version of Anol from X-Men The Last Stand who sometimes gets confused for Toad. You can let me know in the comments who you think he's playing or if you think you recognize some of these other characters with faces that are totally covered. The energy from this gun looks similar to the energy from the Destroyer gun, but the barrel isn't quite right. It might be from Thor Ragnarok just because it looks so janky and cobbled together. This gun actually looks like a Nintendo Super Scope that's been modified, maybe from the Super Mario Brothers movie, like the old movie, because they did use Super Scope weapons during that made to look like real weapons. This guy on the left does not look familiar, neither does the person with the goggles behind him. But one person you probably spotted, like it's very quick, blink and you'll miss it, but he's very identifiable, is this is Juggernaut in the background. Vinnie Jones version of Juggernaut from X-Men The Last Stand. I don't know if it's actual Vinnie Jones or they just got somebody to play the part, but it is meant to be his version of the character. Honestly, it would be weird if they didn't do Juggernaut during this movie because it's so over the top and meant to be so silly, and Juggernaut's character in that movie is so ridiculous. This is the movie where you clown on all the ridiculous things that all the movies have ever done before. There's a couple other characters in the background too with their guns trained on Deadpool and Wolverine, but they're too blurry to make out and their faces are covered. You can kind of see the edges of Ant-Man's giant costume too with a bunch of battle damage on it. Part of the idea is they want to show you that Cassandra Nova has assembled all of these different X-Men, Fantastic Four, Punisher, characters from Fox Marvel movies generally, but some of the MCU movies too. Some look like they're for the more space-based Marvel movies, though. And they want to make it seem like she's cobbled together and collected all the most powerful weapons that wind up on the void getting proved from different realities. Like she has what seems like a sling ring. She has the Ant-Man base. It seems like she has a version of Cerebro. She probably has a Magneto helmet, too. I am sure the list goes on. Like, that's probably just a taste of some of the Easter eggs and stuff that she's collected there. We get that same scene of him trying to appeal to Wolverine about him losing everything, everyone he cares about from his reality. I think he's more worried about what Cassandra Nova is going to do to it. But also, early theory, the TVA itself might be threatening to prune his reality. Because of all the Nexus events he created, theoretically, it would also be at risk. If he gets pruned, they might prune his entire reality as well. Because they did that during the Loki series. They would prune entire realities. He's meant to be from the main X-Men timeline, but you could say that he's a variant now because of what he did with Cable's time travel device. Like he created a bunch of Nexus events with a branch timeline that he lives in now. Just as a way to explain how Shatterstar and all the other characters from Deadpool 2 who died are back. We get that same scene of Eliath coming to consume everything at that Ant-Man base. You get the, like the scene of the Ant-Man actually laid out there. It's the entire body of Ant-Man who's died, but is a skeleton inside the suit now because it seems like he died a long time ago. We get another scene of Dogpool running through the field. This is actually meant to be Lady Deadpool. And all the fireworks here just make you wonder who this is going to wind up being. Like, who is playing Lady Deadpool? Wouldn't it be cool if it were Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds' real-life wife? It would be weird, like a very big missed opportunity if it wasn't her. She was actually spotted on set while they were filming, but she wasn't in any kind of costumes. Like, she was visiting them during this outdoor scene where they were fighting each other on the void in front of the 20th Century Fox logo. But it is always possible that she just quickly filmed the cameo scene while she was there behind closed doors. 
You can let me know in the comments who you think it is. Now, a lot of people also think that it could be Taylor Swift, but I've seen people say that she is in the movie but not playing Lady Deadpool. She could wind up being a version of Dazzler or like some other random character, or she could be playing a version of herself. We get a much wider version of this fight scene shot from the previous trailers. In the background, you notice this is Vancouver's version of the Space Needle, basically. Vancouver jokes, Ryan Reynolds, Canadian, Wolverine, also Canadian character. Most of this stuff in the foreground are pieces of the broken 20th Century Fox logo, but like it looks almost like there's a UFO in the background. There's a broken submarine in the background. This thing jutting out in the background in the middle here next to Vancouver's needle just seems like one of Thanos' Q ships further off in the distance, like they drive past this eventually. We get that same Paul Rudd aging joke that we got in the previous trailer. Big joke there is that in real life at a certain point in the early 2000s, people started to say that Paul Rudd started to look like he was aging in reverse because he got way more healthy, so he started losing weight, he started looking better. If you look at him now, he still looks great for his age, but he, you can kind of tell that he is getting a little bit older. These new characters' faces are all covered, so it's kind of hard to tell who they are. You can let me know who you think they are in the comics. They're riding on a tank from the first Captain America movie, one of the Hydra tanks. The motorcycles are also Hydra motorcycles from that same movie, too. We get that funny scene of them captured and then being taken back. It's from this larger scene here with their convoy, but they're inside one of these cages in the background. Wolverine seems like he cuts off his junk during this. You can make all the tip jokes you want, like just the tip. I think the movies have also joked about his adamantium claws, calling them steak knives before too. And we get that same scene of them jumping through the sling ring portal, trying to escape Elioth, who's slowly coming to consume everything at the base. Or so you think. I think some of what's going on here is a little deceptive, and Cassandra Nova is also using her powers as a telepath to control Elioth here in this moment. Like, she's found a way to control him the way he who remains controlled him, but she's using her powers as a telepath. There's a bunch of Easter eggs going on during this, like a billion different things, so if you think you spotted any that I didn't talk about during the video, write them below in the comments. I'm sure we'll get a couple more of these kinds of teasers and trailers as we get closer to the movie coming out, because it's not coming out till July. They just released that full version of the Deadpool and Wolverine Shut Off Your Phones PSA. It's hilarious. Click here for that and click here for my non-spoilery House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 1 review video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.